In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, and our faithful congregation who are present in this holy church, and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life. And on this holy Sunday where we have come together to uh, come forth to receive Christ and the truth and the true body and true blood of Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer of the world. Amen. This Sunday, the gospel of today is from the gospel of St. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 34. So it's Luke, chapter 12, verses 16 to 34. Just the reverb, Father, just take it off a little bit. Yep. In today's gospel, the Lord Jesus gave a parable of a rich man. And the Lord said that this rich man, his field yielded abundantly on that eve. <clears throat> and on that night, this rich man sat and spoke with himself. And he said to himself, Saul, rejoice and be absolutely cheerful, for the land has yielded plentifully. You have so much to enjoy for years to come, so enjoy it. What shall I do? I will enlarge my bonds. I'll make them larger. And I will store all this abundant riches that the land has given me into the bonds. And then I will say to myself, you can relax now, you are very rich. And God came to him that very night and he said, you fool, you are planning to do all this, yet not realizing your soul is going to be taken away from you, your spirit is going to be taken away from you this very night, and all these plans, who are they going to remain for? For you have been seen rich in your own eyes, but not rich in God. And the Lord Jesus calls a person that is rich in their own eyes, not in the eyes of God. He calls them fools. Fools, my beloved. A piece of advice, this is for all of us, a piece of advice. Don't ever let the day come where you say, I can do everything. Don't ever let the day come for you to say, I can do it on my own. Don't ever take credit for passing an exam, for building a house, for being successful in your business, for being successful in your marital life, for being successful as a leader in the church, as a leader in the, in the secular world, whatever you do and whatever you achieve in your life, don't ever take the credit and say, I've done it. Don't ever. Because if that person walks in this kind of thinking, God will take everything away from that person. And how will God take everything? Like the rich man's in the gospel of today, your spirit will be taken away from you this very night. 
Who holds life and death in his hands? God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When, when things are going easy in our life, when we see that we are free, when we see we can go out whenever we want, come in whenever we want, do whatever we want, we come to this realization which is fake, that look at me, no one can stop me. You see, I am free and I'm living in a free country and I can do anything and everything and there is no one that can tell me otherwise. Before we blink our eyes, everything can change in our life. If God wants to break anyone, I can assure you it is extremely easy for God to do so. You can be surrounded by the entire world and you can be protected by the mighty superpower nations and you can have all the people in your life and you can have all the health and all the riches and there is no limit to what you can achieve. I can assure you, God can change it before we blink our eyes. God is asking every single one of us in today's gospel. God is saying to all of us, don't ever be rich in your own eyes. Let God see you rich in him. A person that does not have Christ as his treasure is a poor person. Even if that person has the whole world at his fingertip. A person that has Christ as his riches, even if he's materialistically poor, he is the richest person on earth. You see, the measurement to our success, the measurement to our wealth, the measurement to our health is when Christ is the king over my life. Not, any, not anyone else, not anything else. Don't be proud of what you have and what you've achieved. Be proud when you say, and not only say, when you truly live this moment, be proud that Christ is your Lord, is your Savior, is your Redeemer, is your God, is your Heavenly Father, Mother, Brother, Friend, is everything to you. That moment you be proud that you've achieved something through His grace. There is not a day that goes by without us asking a question or questions. There is not a day. Every single day that co goes by, we would have asked few questions to the people around us. The Lord Jesus came and he says, in the Holy Gospel, he says, there is one question. If you are able to answer this question, you'll be able to answer every other question that comes your way, or you would have already answered all the other questions if you are able to answer this very one. What is it, Lord? What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world yet he loses himself at the end. What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world and at the end he loses himself? But blessed are you if you lose yourself for the sake of the Son of Man, of I, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you for you shall find it at the end. If we are able to answer this question, what does it benefit me? 
if I have the whole world, but I, I don't have Jesus, what benefit the world will give me? If I don't have Christ, I don't have nothing. Sorry, not drinking in the church, please. If I don't have Christ, I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. I can show you, I can show you what took place since 2020 is one thing. Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of all Kings is not happy. Is not happy with the way His people lived all this time. He's not happy. We go back 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, people were very different. God, God never approved a life of a city. God Sorry, Father, just put, I uh, know it's a bit weird. He's learning. Just a little bit reverb, maybe, just a touch. God never approved of a life of a city. When you read in the Holy Bible, God always encouraged people to live in villages. He never approved of a city being built. Never. Do you know who the first person to build a city ever on the face of this planet? His name was Nimrod. Nimrod. He was the first man to build a city against God's will. Against God's wish. And from the name, you, it says it all, because Nimrod means the rebellious one. Literally, the name Nimrod means the rebellious one, the one who rebels. So he rebelled against God and built a city which God had not approved of. When we go to a countryside, and when we go to a small village somewhere in, in Australia, around Sydney, when you go out and meet people who live in small towns and in little villages, how do you find them? Absolutely beautiful people. For the first time ever you meet them, the way they're going to greet you, the way they are going to welcome you, the way they are going to engage in a conversation with you as if they have known you all their life. So friendly, so polite, so welcoming. Why? Because a life of a village always reminds you of who you really are. From dust to dust and ashes to ashes. There is a life of simplicity. There is a life of humility. There is a life of being me in the truth. You see, the city creates someone that is not you. The city creates someone that God never created you to be. In the city, there is, there is competition. In the city, there is self-exaltation. In the city, there is comparison. Look at this guy, what they drive, what they have what they eat, how they dress, what they do. I need to be competitive and stronger than them. I've got a million, but I need to make it two. 
The two, I want to make it ten. It is never a life of contentment. It is never a life of contentment. And also, the life of a city teaches the person to rely on themselves, not on God. By the way, when I say city, I'm not literally meaning Martin Place and George Street downtown brother I don't mean that literally but I'm talking about the lifestyle the lifestyle a human being adopts for themselves a person is influenced very much so by what they achieve and what they have a person is influenced a lot in a village my beautiful daughter you don't need to stand in front of a mirror for hours putting on makeup because you'll be going and milking a cow You'll be going and looking after the chicken. You'll be going and digging and you'll make yourself all dirty. But in the city, my dear daughter, you need to look a model. You need to look very expensive, very precious. You need to look different. I will put on today something that will make me different to all the other girls I want to impress people are you getting the drift there is competition in the village you cannot compete with a cow or a goat or a sheep but in the city the rich wants to be richer and the richer wants to be the richest and you know what? This kind of approach is like drinking water from the ocean. You see, the ocean's water is plentiful, but the problem, it is salty. And the more you drink, the thirstier you become. You are never content. You will never stop drinking from the ocean because the more you drink, the more you want the more you are thirsty this is the world like the ocean the more you take from the world the more you want to have it is a never-ending story but there is a saying we say in our language contentment is a treasure that never ends contentment is a treasure that never ends this rich man he was already rich because the Lord said he was rich. He was already rich, but he wanted to be richer. You see, when the land gave him all the fruits, what did he think of number one? Himself. Selfish man. Selfish man is poor in the eyes of God. Even though he may be the richest man on earth, but to God, he is the poorest and the naked of all men. He thought of himself. The question is, you rich man, the body you live in, is it yours? No. The clothes you wear, are they yours? No. The house you live in, is it yours? No. The land that yielded abundantly and plentifully for you, is it yours? No, nothing is yours. So what kind of a thinking is this? Nothing but a foolish thinking. Foolish. None of it is mine. And then I say, rejoice soul, enjoy life. You've got plenty of goodies. And none of it is yours. Even the Spirit, God will call it back to Him because the Spirit is God's, the soul is of God's, 
the body is of God's, the land, the house, the clothing, everything belongs to God. Yet, we deceived our own self and said, this is mine. Nothing is mine. Nothing. Nothing is mine. What the Lord is saying, I'm not against you to have a house. I'm not against you to have a car. I'm not against you to live comfortably. But I'm saying one thing, whatever you have and whatever you achieve, you need to remember it is the Lord who made it possible for you. It is the Lord who made it possible for you. I told you this story a long time ago, maybe. There was this beggar. True story, by the way. True story. There was this beggar in this particular country, which I will keep anonymous. He had neither the hands, the arms, nor the legs. It was just a piece of meat. No arms, no legs. People would carry him and put him at the side of the road and he would put a piece of cloth asking for people to have mercy and throw a few cents in that piece of cloth. So one day, he sent someone to go and tell this priest, this particular priest, and the priest himself told the story after this man departed from this life. He told the story himself. He said, one day, I was in the church and this man walked in and he said, Father, yes, my son, so, so, uh, such a person is calling you to come and see him at his place. And he said, he gave me an address. So I went and I followed that address. I got to a place where it was like a little hut. No doors, no windows, no nothing. It was just a little hut. I walk in, I see this human being, no arms, no legs, nothing, just leaning against that wall. And there was a piece of cloth tied up in the, in the middle. He said, Father, thank you so much for, you know, um, coming and, uh, and seeing me today. Father, you see that piece of cloth there? He said, yes, my son. He said, Father, I want you to take it and give it to the needy people. Give it to those who are poor. The priest, to his shocking surprise, he looked at him and in his heart said, if there is anyone poor in this world, I don't think there is one poorer than you. So you go and beg in the street to collect all this money and then you give it to the needy people. He said, I walked out of that little hut, embarrassed, ashamed of myself, thinking that I was a faithful servant of Christ and a child of God. I was absolutely ashamed to call myself a true Christian. He said, that man put me to shame. And he said he would call me every now and then and he would do the same thing. Father, take this money, give it to the needy. One day I went to see him. He said, Father, Thank you for coming. Today is the last day you will see me on the face of this earth. This is the last bag I'm going to give you until hopefully I'll meet you in heaven one day. Tomorrow, Father, the Lord Jesus will take me to him. He came today and said, My son, you have endured enough for my name's sake. You have carried my cross all your life and you were faithful and loyal to the calling of your Jesus Christ. 
you never whinged, you never complained about your lifestyle, about the way you are, about the way you lived. You were always happy and, and thankful of God for what He has done for you and what He has given you. Therefore, my son, you do not have arms on the face of this earth today. Tomorrow, when I call you to me, I will give you the wings of an eagle and you will soar in the heaven of your God. You don't have legs. I will make you run tomorrow faster than a gazelle. You were a beggar on earth. I'll make you a king in my heaven tomorrow. In what are we rich? And in whom are we rich? Is it me? Is it other people? Is it things? Is it fame? Is it position? Is it a rank? Is it, is it an earthly glory? Or is it Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Who is my treasure? Who is my wealth? Who is my treasure? Who is my wealth? My beloveds, majority of people of the 21st century, I'll leave you with this and please pay attention. Majority of people of the 21st century lived a lifestyle for so many years in a very lustful way, in a very worldly pleasure way in a very pleasurable way they had forgotten that God does exist they had forgotten that God is watching they had forgotten that God will judge that God will rebuke that God will discipline and will pass punishment upon the face of this planet people lived in a way as if there was no tomorrow as if it was only me and there is no one else, as if I were God on earth, no one can tell me what to do. In a blink of an eye, everything turned upside down. And it's still not stable till now. Still not stable. Do you think there is one human being on the face of this planet they can do whatever they want impossible there is no government leader there is no church leader there is no one that can do whatever they want and get away with it impossible impossible my beloveds impossible then the question is, why is this happening? The answer is one thing. The Lord is upset and angry. The Lord is upset. We became this rich man. We relied on ourselves, on our achievements. We took the credit away from God and gave it to ourselves. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking in general. Humanity lost touch with the true divine God. Our way of living became so selfish, so egocentric. We took God out of the equation. We took God out of the equation. That's why God started to closing in on us and started taking all the privileges that we had before. Let us not forget, it wasn't that long, it was only the other day when, when we were at lockdowns. We couldn't come to church. We couldn't even drive more than five kilometers from where we lived. There was fines issued left, right, and center. People being persecuted. There was police force and army forces taken into the streets. And in some cities, 
the used force Australia had not seen before. What took place in Australia was absolute vicious. Absolute viciousness. For a democratic country to behave in such a way, only someone like Hitler would do such a thing, or Augustus Caesar. Where was democracy? None whatsoever. But how come I was living free before? You see, God allows you to be free. God gives you this privilege in order for you to come and thank him, not ignore him and deny him. When God gives you this freedom to enjoy life, he gives it because he loves you. You are his child. He gives it to you so that you can come and worship him and thank him for everything he has done for you. The day you deny him, he will take away those privileges. Just to get your attention that you have walked away from me, my child. Come back. You've walked away. Come back. And when we come back to the Lord and say sorry, he will restore us once again. He will give us a life of dignity. Don't ever think anyone can touch you when Christ is your protector. Don't ever think. Don't ever think. Even if they kill this body, like they did with the ex-prime minister of Japan, You see, this is a human being. King David says it. This prime minister, and he, he served two terms, and he was a man of influence, and to somewhat degree he was very respected, and he had a, a, a huge caliber in making decision on a political level in Japan. So he wasn't just any human being, a man of influence and a man of reputation. But did he think when he woke up that morning to go and give a talk, did he think, did it cross his mind that he's going to leave home never to come back? No. King David says, a life of a person is like a dream at the awakening. A life of a person is like a dream at the awakening. You see, what does King David mean? A life of a person is like a dream at the awakening. You see, when we see a dream, we don't realize it's a dream. We think it's reality. Nobody sees a dream and says to himself or herself, Ah, oh, look, it's just a dream. I'm going to wake up. No, this is reality for you. But the moment you wake up, all that reality was one big lie, just a dream, gone, everything changed. I'm, a, I'm in a different dimension. I'm in a different realm altogether. I'm in a different place, situation. Everything changed with a blink of an eye. But while I was dreaming, I thought, this is it. I'm going to be here forever. My life and your life on earth is like a dream. Our life is a dream on this earth. The moment the spirit leaves the body, it is a life like a dream that is at the awakening. The moment the spirit leaves the body, I wake up. When I wake up, I see all this world and all the plans I had to do and to achieve gone gone and so swiftly gone this prime minister with a blink of an eye perished i pray for his family may the lord jesus touch their hearts and comfort their troubled hearts and i pray for all of japan to come to christ and for all of china to come to christ and for all of Asia, Europe, Middle East, Africa, every nation to come to Christ. Because my beloveds, at the end of the day, there is one creator that has created everyone and everything. 
And one day we need to go back to the Creator and give an account. We need the Lord Jesus for He is the true divine Creator of everyone and everything. And this ex-minister, Prime Minister, I can assure you, he has realized this truth. I hope it's not too late for him. Believe you. You know when the spirit leaves the body? Oh my goodness. You can have all the professors and all the doctors come in and giving you whatever and trying to revive you and bring you back. When God calls that spirit, there is no medical power. There is no scientific power that can bring back that spirit. You know, all the machine, all the machines, the MRI and all the X-ray machines, all they can do is check your body. The only one who can check your soul and spirit is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I can assure you, this Japanese prime minister, when was it? Yesterday? Yesterday. He realized who God is. <laughs> he found out. <laughs> yeah. And he realized another thing. There is this government in heaven that is in charge of every government on earth. Jesus Christ moves kings, presidents, and prime ministers. He appoints them, he removes them. Believe you me. Church leaders, he appoints them, he removes them. He gives life and he takes it back. He is the one and only. Enjoy life with Christ. Thank the Lord for what you have. My daughter, my son, thank the Lord for what you have. Thank the Lord for what you have. You don't have money in the bank account? Thank Him. You are not as beautiful as your neighbor's daughter? Thank Him. Don't go and change your face. Don't do any plastic surgeries. Don't be deceived by the enemy. Do not touch this body. Your body is not yours. It's a copyright. It belongs to God. Don't play with it. I beg you. These things make God angry. We began to changing our bodies because we're not happy with the way we look, yet God created me this way. I started spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on my body, yet God says you cannot, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. We need to live for Christ, my beloveds. We need to live for Christ. Because as a human being, what's the difference between me and this prime minister who was killed yesterday? No difference. We are all human beings. I could walk out, never to go back again. I could sleep, never wake up in this world again. Anything can happen any moment. Death is so eminently close, it is with us 24-7. There is no one that can guarantee their life to exist tomorrow. Therefore, the Lord Jesus says you need to be ready and prepared always. Have me as your Lord. Have me as your Savior. Have me as your holy companion, your friend. Do not walk outside of your house unless you take me with you. Do not sleep unless you remember me before you go to sleep. You need to have Jesus in your life always. Thank Him for everything you have, even though it is painful at the moment. Who has given you the pain in your life? Is it your, your wife, your husband, your, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your work colleague? What is it? 
a situation that you are struggling with, give it to Christ. Thank the Lord. Give it to Christ. Thank Him, my beloved. And be content with what you have. Be content. Be content. Let Jesus Christ be your treasure. Let Him be your treasure. When the Lord says, look at the birds of the sky, it neither plants nor harvests nor saves in barns like this rich man, but the, tree, the, the bird of the sky is smarter than this rich man. But he's, he's teaching us, look at the bird of the sky. Doesn't plant, doesn't harvest. Your heavenly father feeds that bird always without fail. Aren't you much greater than that bird? You are the image and the likeness of God. You are a child of God. The bird is just a creation. You are his child. So if you think God feeds the bird, he's not going to feed his own child. Where is your faith? Why, what are you worried about? What are you concerned of? Why are you so anxious and scared of what the future holds? Whatever the future holds, who cares? You hold on to Christ who is the owner and the creator of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Put everything in his capable hands and trust him to navigate your life the way he chooses, not you and I. The way he chooses. But the Lord, I'll leave you with it. The Lord says, look at the bird. But he, what does he say? It does not plant nor harvest. He didn't say, look at the bird and see how beautiful the bird is. Look at the feathers. Look at the size. Look at the eyes. Look at the beak. No, 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 no. None of that. Because all these things are visible. The Lord is inviting us all to go beyond the visible and come into the invisible. Because the invisible is where your faith lies. He said, look at the bird and see what you do not see with your naked eye. The bird doesn't plant and doesn't harvest. He says, do not look at the thing on from ex externally and focus on the external. Go inside into the internal because whatever is internal that is invisible to the eye is what is eternal. Don't look at a person from outside and judge. Look at the person inside the heart. And inside the heart, only God sees. Therefore, you cannot tell what a person is like unless you know what the heart is. The only one who knows the heart of a person is God. So don't look at the outside and imitate or judge. Don't look at someone and say, she is beautiful, I need to be like her. Look at your heart and make it beautiful to Christ, not your face. Make your heart beautiful to Christ, not your face. This face, no matter how many times we iron it, we stretch it, we pump it, it's going to get old and wrinkled and the termites will eat it. It will eat it. Make this beautiful. Focus on the internal not the external. And thank the Lord for everything. Amen? That's the way. Let us bow our heads and ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us, to make us worthy, to come forth and receive Him in the Holy Eucharist, the true body and true blood of Christ. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom, 
by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. God bless you. A couple of announcements, my beloveds, and we um, will leave you with it. Um, next Saturday, it is uh, the, um, the commemoration of St. Thomas the Apostle, but we will uh, remember, that, uh, remember his, his day on next Sunday, God willing, the 17th of July. It is St. Thomas the Apostle's um, remembrance. Uh, a reminder for the parents who bring their children to the Divine Heart Sunday School and who wish to enroll their children in the Divine Heart Sunday School. The school will be um, coming back on Sunday, next Sunday, the 17th of July. They've just taken two weeks break. Uh, so next Sunday, the Divine Heart Sunday School is coming back. Uh, please see Sister Mary uh, to uh, enroll your children's names if you, have, if you wish. And I encourage parents to bring their children every Sunday to Sunday School. So please see Sister Mary next Sunday. Um, we are going to Melbourne for a visit. Uh, we'll be um, having Bible preach um, on Wednesday, the 20th of July at 7 p.m. That's going to be in Assyrian. And on Thursday, 21st of July at 7 p.m. in English. Um, it will be held at a church which is uh, named St. Thomas Uniting Church. The address is 16 Rayfield Avenue, Craigieburn. St. Thomas Uniting Church, 16 Rayfield Avenue, Craigieburn. That will be on the 20th of July at 7 p.m. in Assyrian and Thursday, 21st of July at 7 p.m. in English. We used to go to Melbourne once a month prior to this pandemic. The biggest lie ever. Uh, it's not the biggest, but one of the biggest lies of the 21st century. So before the pandemic, we used to go once a month to Melbourne for Bible preaching. So it's been almost three years since we've been to Melbourne. They've been calling us, um, reaching out to us from Melbourne. Some people uh, that I personally don't know of, they've seen us on YouTube and Facebook, and they reached out about maybe three weeks ago, and they said, Bishop, we want you to come. Uh, it's very important. We want to see you here in Melbourne. I said, look, I used to come once a month, but with the Lord's grace, we'll be coming uh, very soon. So we thank the Lord. It has been confirmed and booked for the 20th and the 21st of July in Melbourne, Craigieburn. The city, the town is Craigieburn, or the suburb, Craigieburn. So um, we're looking forward to meeting our beloved people in Melbourne, uh, including Dan Andrews. Um, I will express my love and uh, gratitude to Dan Andrews when I see him. Yes. Uh, also, my beloveds, um, we've been uh, recently we've talked about um, asking for your support in helping these children abroad in Australia and abroad mainly. Um, those children that are suffering, families that are truly struggling uh, to maintain and keep their children um, at home because of the financial situation and whatever atrocities those countries are going through. So we are asking for your donations, for your support to help a child that is in an absolute need. Um, to, 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 to know more of this, please um, see the youth group committee. They will give you more information about it. Um, it's actually a charity that we've registered here in Australia that's been registered for about between five and seven years by now, I think. And uh, that charity is called the Good Samaritan Aid Society. 
So if you visit www.jesus, which is G-S-A-S, that is the abbreviation of the Good Samaritan Aid Society. The abbreviation happened to be Jesus, and it's very close to the name Jesus. So it's not Jesus, but it is Jesus, which is G for George, S for Sam, A for Alpha, and S for Sam, jesus.org.au. So visit uh, jesus.org.au, uh, and you will see, uh, will, you will, uh, to the website will tell you how to donate and support a child that is in a grief need of our help. May God bless you abundantly. I can assure you, people have already started donating very generously, very generously, and it, is, it brings nothing but absolute joy and fulfillment to see wonderful people are still around in this world. We thank the Lord for these wonderful people and for all of you, my beloveds. And I encourage you to do this uh, and be part of this uh, good deed by helping a person that is in need more so a little child who is useless and hopeless, can't help and support themselves. We need to be there for our beautiful children. And may God bless you all and reward you abundantly. But I can assure you so far, we've just announced it a couple of days ago, the donations started coming and they are coming in a very, very generous way. We thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for what you have. Thank the Lord for who you are. Thank the Lord for how you look. Thank the Lord for creating you as you. Ask the Lord to give you this gift for you to remain you. Don't ever try to be someone that is not you. God gave you this identity unique to you only. God gave you this fingerprint that you have it only. Out of the almost 8 billion people that live on the face of this planet, no one has your fingerprint. And someone comes ignorantly and says, the Big Bang made you. Get a life. 8 billion people it's not a fluke for anyone to have your same fingerprint. Your DNA and my DNA consists, consist of 3.21 billion bits of information. Your DNA and my DNA consists of 3.1 billion bits of information. If I were to convert it into words, and write it on an A4 paper size. It would take me with 500 words per page. 500 words per page. It will take me 600,000 pages to write your DNA alone. 600,000 pages. You put the entire encyclo encyclopedias of the world together. It is nowhere near the information that is in your DNA. And you're telling me the Big Bang made this? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. University students, do not be influenced by so-called professors. The, there are people deliberately placed atheist professors at university levels to do one thing, to brainwash an entire generation. It is deliberate because the educational system has been infiltrated long time ago. Evolution, I'll leave it with Karl Marx, the atheist, and his round table with him. And he can go around that table until he gets dizzy and collapses. Don't ever be deceived by the enemy. Christ lives. So will I live when I have him as my Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you.
Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you.